just roll. There's a lot to do, but you got to choose. Well, I used to be singing the blues, but now I'm singing the news. Howdy, neighbor. Welcome to the Good News Program. I'm your host, Mike Vaughn. And I'm so glad you tuned in today because I do have some good news to share with you. That's right, news from God's Word. And that is the best news in the world. I've been sharing with you about life principles for Christians. I sat down uh, one day in my study time and the Lord just began to give me a list of life principles that would be helpful for us as Christians to, uh, to live by. And these are things just right out of the Word of God. And I give you scripture for, for all of them. Last time we talked about that we can be led by the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit abides on the inside of us as Christians. And He gives us the direction that we need in life. But today I'm going to be talking about principle number 10, which is be a worshiper. That's right. Be a worshiper. So I invite you to Get on the phone, call your friends and neighbors and remind them that the Good News program is on so you can be a blessing to them. I'm going to share a song with you first. And this is one of my favorite hymns entitled, When God Dipped His Pen of Love in My Heart. So you just sing along with me, enjoy this song, and I'll be back in a few moments with this teaching segment. Stay tuned. God dipped his pen I love in my heart He writes my soul a message He wants me to know His spirit holy fire Fill this sinful soul of mine When God dipped his love in my heart Well, he said I would tell you living so how he brought salvation and he made me whole but I found a good hide such love that Jesus did in heart well it makes me laugh and it makes me cry sets my sinful soul on fire when God dips his love in my heart Some old burden and sorrow tries to keep me from my goal. I go to God in prayer. I can't always find Him there to whisper sweet peace to my soul. Well, I said I would tell to the living soul how He brought salvation and He made me whole. But about the good and such love. Jesus did it all. Well, it makes me laugh and it makes me cry. Sets my sinful soul on fire. When God dips His love in my heart. How many believes it tonight? He dipped His love in our heart. Well, he walked every step. Up Calvary's rugged way To give his life completely Just to bring us a better day My life was deep in sin But in love he took me in And his blood had washed away every stain well, I said I would tell it to a living soul How he brought salvation and he made me whole But I found a good time, such love that Jesus did all Well, it makes me laugh and it makes me cry Sets my sinful soul on fire When God dips his love in my heart well, he said I would tell it to a living soul How he brought salvation and made me whole But I found a good hide such love that Jesus 
His love in my heart Yes, God, it's His love in my heart Praise the Lord, friend. I hope you've enjoyed that song because I enjoy singing the praises of God. Amen. And so this kind of brings me right into my next principle. I want to talk about number 10 is to be a worshiper. Amen. And singing has a lot to do with worshiping. Now, you don't have to sing in order to worship because true worship comes out of the heart. And singing and music, that's kind of just accompanies the worship. Amen. Because, you know, I've been into a lot of churches in the past, years ago, when uh, it said uh, worship service, there wasn't no worshiping going on. Amen. And that's a fact. Just because you have music or just because somebody says it's worship service doesn't mean that there was going to be worship going on. You see, worship is much more than just singing. Worship is much more than just mouthing words out of the hymn book. Worship can actually be divided in three categories. Thanksgiving, praise, then worship. You know, I enjoy teaching on this. As a matter of fact, I did an in-depth teaching on Thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've done it many times through the years, but we're going through it again here at the Good News Fellowship Church where I pastor, and I mean I am having a good time going through this teaching because what we do is I teach on it for a while, then we stop, and then we actually begin to praise and worship. Amen. And so we, we need to look at this. What does worship mean? As a Christian, should we be worshipers? Yes, we should. Because number one, it pleases God when we worship Him because He is the object of our worship. God is the object of our praise. When we come to church, we don't come, you know, to worship somebody or to worship ourselves, but we come to worship God. And so think about it. When we come together in a church to worship God, we start off with thanksgiving. We thank God for the things that He's done for us. We thank God for the mighty acts, for His mighty works, for uh, the salvation that He has wrought for us. That's what thanksgiving is all about. It's about what God has done for us. Now, I know that you can be thankful that you're saved, that you have eternal life, that you have forgiveness that you have redemption, that you have uh, the promise of God that you will live forever and ever with Jesus Christ. There's just so many things that we can be thankful for. And you see, all that this has to do with worship. It's all capsulized in this one big thing that we call worship, but it starts off with thanksgiving. And then we go into praise, which is the acknowledgement of God's character, of who God is. And especially when you read through the book of Psalms, which is Israel's song and praise book. Did you know that's what Psalms is? All of those are actually songs, amen? And they're meant to be used to worship and praise God. And as you read through the book of Psalms, you'll notice how much it mentions God's character, who God is. He's a God of grace. He's a God of peace. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of kindness. He's a God of righteousness. He's a God of justice. And you can go on and on and on. And here's the thing. God desires to hear us say, Lord, I worship you. I praise you. You are a God of kindness. You are a God of mercy. You are a God of grace. You are a God of... See, God could do without that because He's God. I mean, He's self-sufficient, but He desires our praise. He desires our worship. And so we were created as human beings, we were created with this need on the inside of us to worship. You see, it's not 
who you're going to worship or what you're going to worship. You're going to worship something or someone. Now, there's a lot of people, you know, they worship things, material things, money, riches, homes, cars, because that's all they spend their life doing. Now, if you think about it, whatever you spend most of your time on and your money, that's probably your object of worship, you see? And, but if you're not worshiping God, believe me, you are worshiping something. But as Christians, we are called to be worshipers of God. Amen. Now, I love Psalm 100 verse 4. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Oh, I love that scripture, don't you? Well, it tells us the progression of worship. It tells us that we start off with thanksgiving and that's thanking God for the things he's done for us. And then it progresses into praise, which extols God and magnifies God for who he is. And then we sense the presence of God inviting us in to that place of worship. And that's where 1 Chronicles 16, 29 comes in. It says, give to the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering and come before him Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. You know, one thing that, that uh, I need to mention to you as well is something about the Old Testament temple. That is a wonderful pattern of worship. Remember the Old Testament tabernacle? It was the tabernacle first when uh, Moses had the tabernacle built, but then later, of course, it was a temple that Solomon built and then David and so forth. But the tabernacle or temple, it had different stages to it. It had the outer court, they had the inner court, then it had the holy of holies. Well, that represents our worship. In the outer court, you have thanksgiving. and in the, in the inner court, you have praise and then the Holy of Holies where the presence of the Lord abided behind the veil, that's where worship is done. Amen. So the, the priest, he would start out with uh, offering the sacrifice in the outer court upon the altar. Remember that they had that big brazen altar and they had four horns on the altar and they would lay, uh, put a lamb up there and they would sacrifice this lamb and blood would be shed. Well, that represents the Lord Jesus Christ who is the Lamb of God. So whenever we come before God to worship, we should remember and recognize our sacrifice who is Jesus Christ because it's His blood, it's His sacrifice that gives us access into the holy place and then on into the holy of holies, amen? So there's a progression, notice, because the, the temple is a pattern for that. Thanksgiving, praise, and then worship, amen? Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. I like what Jesus said in John 4, 24, talking about worship. He said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, as I said earlier, when we were created, we were created with this desire on the inside of us to worship, to magnify, to extol someone or something. And what we are called to worship, of course, is our creator, God. Amen? Amen. And we're not called to worship things, money, and all this, this kind of stuff, but we are called to worship the Lord our God. Amen. And so I want to encourage you, if you have never done it before, begin to say, I'm going to be a worshiper. I'm going to worship God. And always start off with thanksgiving. Say, Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for forgiving me of all of my sin. I thank you, Lord, for giving me a place in your body and in your family. Amen. And then begin to praise God for who he is. Say, Lord, I praise you that you are a God of grace. You are a God of peace. And, um, and you don't, like I said, 
if you have music, that's fine. But if you don't have music, you can still praise and worship God. Thank you. Say, Lord, I thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And that's what they said a lot in the Old Testament when they would come before the Lord in praise and worship. And all the Levites would gather around and they would have trumpets and so forth. And they would chant this over and over, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. That's praise. And then as we're praising the Lord, we sense the invitation to come into his presence where we worship him for his holiness. You see, the main thing worship has to do with is the holiness of God. He is holy. And of course, holy means simply to be set apart. God is set apart from all that is unclean. He is set apart from all sin because he is righteous he is pure and he is holy. Amen. So let's be a worshiper, a worshiper of God. Amen. Well, I want to take a break right now and share a song with you. And I'll be back in a few moments to pray with you. Stay tuned. Those burdens anymore. There's 
There's a light in the darkness There's a love that's true Jesus is waiting, friend He's waiting now for you Come quickly now Before they close the door Why don't you give those burdens to the Lord? That's what this altar is for. That's what this altar is for. Praise the Lord, friend. I love singing and worshiping God. I'm telling you what, it just lifts you up when you worship God. There's just something about it. Amen. And I want to encourage you, be a worshiper of the Lord, not just every now and then, but every day. As a matter of fact, as soon as I wake up every morning, I worship God. I begin to thank Him for His mighty works that He's done and I thank Him for who He is. He is a God of grace and peace and power. Amen. And I do trust that everyone watching today and listening by radio, you have already accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and you have that relationship with Him. But perhaps you have never made that decision. And if you have not, I want to take this opportunity to pray with you. Maybe you've been putting it off for some reason. Well, it's time to stop putting it off. It's time to start being a worshiper. Amen. Why don't you pray this with me? Just say, Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for my sin and the way that I've lived. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross for the sins of the world and for my sins. I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior and my Lord. I surrender my heart and my life to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you are now a born again child of God and the Spirit of God has come to abide on the inside of you and you are a worshiper of God. That's right. That's the first step to get into the family. Amen. And you become a worshiper of the Lord. And so I want to offer this special little gift to you. It's a little book entitled, Now What? If you prayed that prayer for your first time to receive Jesus. And this just tells you how to get started in growing in the Lord. How to read your Bible and how to pray and different things like that. So call me today at 888-429-2280 and I'll send this right to you. If I'm not in the office when you call, just leave it on our machine. You can leave your address or your call back number and say, I prayed with Brother Mike to receive Jesus and I'd like that little book entitled, Now What? 888-429-2280 and you can see that on your screen as well. I'm excited about what Jesus is doing in hearts and lives all over the world. Amen. Praise God. I want to share a few announcements right quick. We have a concert that we host right here at the Good News Fellowship Church in Tickfall, Louisiana, the first Friday of every month. And we want to invite you to come out and be with us September the 2nd. Our special guest will be Ron Smith and the Grace uh, Church Band with uh, Pastor Jonathan Adams. October the 7th, our special guest will be the group Chronicle. And we'll get started at 6.30 p.m. So be sure and put it on your calendar to come out and be with us for our next concert. We have more information on our website at mvmgoodnews.com. And uh, our special offer for September is a teaching CD and a music CD. And this is our uh, music CD, Simple Things. Also, my teaching CD entitled, How to Make the Right Decisions in Life. So if you have been uh, just in confusion, not, not sure, uh, know how to make decisions in life, because sometimes we, we run across tough decisions, well, this will give you basic Bible principles, how to make the right decisions. And you can get both of these for a gift of only $15 to the ministry. Just call us today at 888-429-2280. And we'll be glad to get your information and send this right on to you. 
And, uh, and I'm just excited about the people that's been tuning in to the Good News program. And we want to ask you to call your friends and neighbors and invite them to be tuning in as well. Amen. And once again, call for that offer for your gift of only $15 for the uh, Simple Things CD and How to Make the Right Decisions in Life Teaching CD. Don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook to keep up with the ministry. We have the uh, Mike Vaughn Ministries Facebook pages. Also, we have the YouTube page, and you can watch the Good News program on there at any time you want to on demand. So be sure and avail yourself to that. And I want to say a special thanks to our partners. Thank you, partners, for making this outreach ministry possible. Without you, we could not do what we do. So thank you for your prayers and your financial support. And uh, if you're watching this program and you have never become a Good News partner, we want you to pray about becoming a partner. We send out a special letter each month keeping you uh, in touch with us and letting you know about the ministry, the updates of what's going on. And also we send out product offers periodically. So be sure and pray about becoming a partner. Write us with your prayer requests and your praise reports to Post Office Box 550, Tickfall, Louisiana, 70466. Thank you, Father, for our friends and partners. Touch them now, strengthen them, and heal them by your mighty hand. And I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We love you and we'll see you next time right here on the Good News Program. I appreciate your interest in my songs and music. If you would like more information concerning my music or preaching CDs, you can write and request a product list. Send all correspondence to Mike Vaughn Ministries, Post Office Box 550, Tickfall, Louisiana, 70466. Or email us at mvmgoodnews at aol.com. And our website is mvmgoodnews.com. Thanks for sharing this time with us today. We hope you have been blessed and encouraged. Remember, this program is brought to you by our friends and partners. Pray and ask God what you can do to help us spread the good news. I used to be singing the blues, but now I'm singing the new. I'm singing the new. I'm singing the good news. I'm singing the new. I'm singing the good news. I'm singing the new. I'm